it's Thursday and that means story time at Washington Carnegie Public Library. I'm going to read you a story and a poem today, but before we read, we're going to sing our story time song. Are you ready? Here we go. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story and you really want to show it, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, find a seat. If you're ready for a story, find a seat. If you're ready for a story and you really want to show it, if you're ready for a story, find a seat. Our poem today is from Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot. And this version is illustrated by Axel Scheffler. So it's got some great illustrations. Right, here we go. McCavity, the mystery cat. McCavity's a mystery cat. He's called the hidden paw, for he's the master criminal who can defy the law. He's the bafflement of Scotland Yard, the flying squad's despair, for when they reach the scene of crime, McCavity's not there. McCavity, McCavity, there's no one like McCavity. He's broken every human law. He breaks the law of gravity. His powers of levitation would make a fakir stare. And when you reach the scene of crime, McCavity's not there. You may seek him in the basement. You may look up in the air. But I tell you once and once again, McCavity's not there. McCavity's a ginger cat. He's very tall and thin. You would know him if you saw him, for his eyes are sunken in. His brow is deeply lined with thought. His head is highly domed. His coat is dusty from neglect. His whiskers are uncombed. He sways his head from side to side with movements like a snake. And when you think he's half asleep, he is always wide awake. McCavity, McCavity, there's no one like McCavity, for he's a fiend in feline shape, a monster of depravity. You may meet him in a by street, you may see him in the square. But when a crime's discovered, then McCavity's not there. He's outwardly respectable, they say he cheats at cards, and his footprints are not found in any file of Scotland Yards. And when the larder's looted, or the jewel case is rifled, or when the milk is missing, or another peak's been stifled, or the greenhouse glass is broken, and the trellis past repair, aye, there's the wonder of the thing. McCavity's not there. And when the Foreign Office finds a treaty's gone astray, or the Admiralty lose some plans and drawings by the way, there may be a scrap of paper in the hall or on the stair, but it's useless to investigate. McCavity's not there. And when the loss has been disclosed, the Secret Service say, It must have been McCavity. But he's a mile away. You'll be sure to find him resting or a licking of his thumbs or engaged in doing complicated long division sums. McCavity, McCavity, there's no one like McCavity. There never was a cat of such deceitfulness and suavity. He always has an alibi and one or two to spare. At whatever time the deed took place, McCavity wasn't there. And they say that all the cats whose wicked deeds are widely known, I might mention Mungo Jerry, I might mention Griddlebone, are nothing more than agents for the cat who all the time just controls their operations, the Napoleon of crime. And that's the end of McCavity the Mystery Cat by T.S. Eliot. Our story today is a familiar one. I'm sure you've heard it before. It's called Jack and the Beanstalk. And this version is retold by Anna Milborn and illustrated by Lorena Alvarez. Jack and his mother were so poor they never had enough to eat. 
One morning, they had nothing left at all. You'll have to take the cow to the market and sell her, Jack's mother said sadly. On the way, Jack met a strange little man. I'll give you these for your cow, said the little man, holding out five wrinkly dried beans. I need money, not beans, said Jack. Ah, but these are magic beans, said the little man. If you plant them, they'll grow into a beanstalk so tall it touches the sky. Amazing, said Jack. He gave his cow to the little man, took the beans, and ran off home. But when he got home, he was in trouble, big trouble. What have you done? Jack, we need money, not beans, cried his mother. And she threw the beans out the window. Poor Jack went to bed hungrier and gloomier than ever. What were they to do? In the morning, even his room seemed gloomy. His room seemed gloomy? Just a minute. Outside his window was a giant beanstalk, so tall it touched the sky. The little man was right, thought Jack. He scrambled onto the giant beanstalk and climbed up and up and up and there at the top he found a giant castle with a giantess in front of it. Jack gulped, then his tummy rumbled. Excuse me, he called out. Please could you spare some breakfast? The giantess picked him up. My husband munches and crunches little people like you, she said. I'll give you breakfast, but you'd better be gone before my husband gets home. She whisked Jack inside and set him down next to an enormous crusty loaf. Breakfast had never tasted so good. But then, stomp, stomp, stomp. Quickly, hide in here. The giantess stuffed Jack into a pot just as a giant strode into the kitchen. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. <gasps> What's going to happen? Where is he? demanded the giant, and he started to search the table. You're imagining things, said his wife. Eat up your breakfast while I bring your hen. She returned with the hen and put it on the table. Lay, commanded the giant. Clink. The bird laid a gleaming golden egg. With a grunt, the giant closed his eyes and began to snore. The giantess lifted Jack out of the pot. Run for your life, she whispered. But Jack had his eyes on the hen. He grabbed the hen and fled for the door. The bird let out a rock, rock, which woke the giant who saw Jack and let out a furious roar. Jack dived out of the door and onto the beanstalk with the giant hot on his heels. Jack scrambled down the beanstalk as fast as his legs would carry him. What's going on? On, shrieked his mother from below. Is that a, a, a giant? Just bring the axes, Jack cried. Jack and his mother chopped and chopped at the beanstalk. It creaked and it wobbled, then it toppled over sideways. The giant was flung far over the hills. They never saw him again. As for Jack and his mother, they lived happily ever after. Each morning, the hen laid a golden egg, so they grew rich, and Jack never climbed another beanstalk. There are many, many versions of this story, and in the back it tells us that Jack and the Beanstalk is an English fairy tale. The oldest known written version dates from 1807, so that's over 200 years ago, but the story was around long before then. The cry, fee, fo, and fum, also appears in William Shakespeare's play, King Lear. 
So that's a very old story. And that's the end of Jack and the Beanstalk. I hope you enjoyed our reading today. I really enjoy reading out loud to you, and I hope you can join us next week. Bye-bye.